What you aim at determines the way the world manifests itself to you. And so if the world is manifesting itself in a very negative way, one thing to ask is, are you aiming at the right thing? Jordan Peterson, a Canadian clinical psychologist, psychology professor, and author, is widely recognized for his conservative perspectives and critique of political correctness. His 2016 book, 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos, brought him significant attention by blending psychological insights with philosophical reflections on topics such as personal responsibility, meaning, and societal structures. His candid views on issues like free speech and gender identity have made him a controversial figure, admired by some for challenging dominant narratives, while others criticize him for his provocative positions. Your best strategic position is, how am I insufficient and how can I rectify that? And the thing is, you are insufficient and you could rectify it. Both of those are within your grasp, if you aim low enough. I'm saying it tongue-in-cheek to some degree, but I'm doing it as an aid to humility. It's like, well, I don't know how to start improving my life. Someone might say that, and I would say, well, you're not aiming low enough. There's something you could do that you are regarding as trivial, that you could do, that you would do, that would result in an actual improvement, but it's not a big enough improvement for you, so you won't lower yourself enough to take the opportunity. Aim low, and I don't mean don't aim up, but you have to accept the fact that you can set yourself a goal that you can attain, and there's not going to be much glory in it to begin with. Because if you're not in very good shape, the goal that you could attain, could attain tomorrow isn't very glorious. But it, it's a hell of a lot better than nothing. It's way better than blaming someone else. It's way less dangerous. There's a statement in the New Testament. It's called the Matthew Principle, and economists use it to describe how the economy in the world works. To those who have everything, more will be given. From those who have nothing, everything will be taken. It's like what's very pessimistic in some sense because it means that as you start to fail, you fail more and more rapidly. But it also means that as you start to succeed, you succeed more and more rapidly. So a small step today means puts you in a position to take a slightly bigger step the next day. You do that for two or three years and you're starting to stride. One of the things you can do for young people that no one's doing is to talk to them about responsibility. It's like I said, there's a huge marketplace for responsibility. That's what you want to talk to young people about. It's like, get your act together and do something worthwhile with your life. The more responsibility you take on, the more meaning your life has. And the higher degree of responsibility that you agree voluntarily to try to bear, the richer your life will be. There's glory in it. There's deep meaning in it. And young people are starving for that because no one ever tells them that. You're way more than you think because we have to be more than we are, because if we aren't, we're not going to survive. Circumambulation was this continual circling, in some sense, of who you could be. You might notice, for example, that there are themes in your life. You know, when you go back across your experiences, you see you kind of have your typical experience that sort of repeats itself. So imagine that something glimmers before you. It's an, an interest that's dawning and you decide, how do I know if I should pursue that? It's probably a stupid idea. And the proper response to that is, you're right, it probably is a stupid idea, because almost all, all ideas are stupid. And so the, the probability that as you move forward on your adventure, that you're gonna get it right the first time is zero. It's just not gonna happen. And so then you might think, well, maybe I'll just wait around until I get the right idea and which people do. They finally got it right, but the problem is you're too stupid to know when you've got it right. So waiting around isn't gonna help because even if it, the perfect opportunity manifested itself to you in your incomplete form, the probability that you would recognize it as the perfect opportunity is zero. You might even think it's the worst possible idea that you've ever heard of anywhere. Highly likely. You start your path and you think that you're heading you know, towards your star. It doesn't matter that you overshoot continually. Even if you don't learn what you should have done, you're going to continually learn what you shouldn't keep doing. And if you learn enough about what you shouldn't keep doing, then that's tantamount at some point to learning at the same time what you should be doing. As you progress, the degree of overshooting starts to decline. There's nothing hypothetical about that. The fact that you're full of faults doesn't mean you have to stop and doesn't mean that you can't learn. 
And so you can posit an ideal and you're going to be wrong about it, but it doesn't matter because what you're right about is positing the ideal moving towards it. It doesn't matter that it's imperfect. It just matters that you do it and that you move forward. Everybody has a reason to be anxious because we know that we're vulnerable and we know that we're going to die. And how you can not be anxious under those circumstances is a great mystery. And the same thing applies with regards to depression. There's no courage in naivety because you don't know what dangers you might apprehend. But to be fully self-conscious means that you're perfectly aware of your limitations and how you might be hurt. What you do with people who are afraid, to some degree depressed, but certainly anxious, is you lay out what they're anxious about in detail, and then you decompose it into small problems, hypothetically manageable problems, and then you have the person expose themselves to the thing that they're afraid of, and what happens isn't that they get less afraid. What happens instead is they get braver, and that's not the same thing, because if you get less afraid, it's like, well, the world isn't as dangerous as I thought it was, you know, silly me. If you get braver, that's not what happens. What happens is, yeah, the world's just as dangerous as I thought, but it turns out that there's something in me that responds to taking that on as a voluntary challenge and grows and thrives as a consequence. If you can view yourself acting in a courageous and forthright manner and encountering the world and trying to improve your lot and taking risks in a non-naive way, then you have something that you can comfort yourself with at night when you're wondering what the point is of your futile and miserable life. First of all, figure out what is it that you want to accomplish. You have to figure out what you want. And then you have to figure out how to decompose what you want into actionable steps. And then you need to break those steps down into small enough increments that you're highly likely to undertake them. The next thing you need to do, familiarize yourself with a scheduler like Google Calendar. Then you can start by putting in something small. It doesn't matter what it is. Put it in the schedule. And you can start by scheduling the things that you would like to do. So you can imagine, well, I like going out to movies. I like going to the mall. I like hanging around with my friends. I like watching TV. Then schedule those things. So then you think, well, that means I'm forcing myself to do them. It's not that. It's that now you're allowing yourself time to do them. Generally, you should approach it as if this is something that will help you get what you want. It's also a pretty good way of controlling anxiety, you know, because one of the most common sources of anxiety is just not knowing what to do. What you aim at determines the way the world manifests itself to you. And so if the world is manifesting itself in a very negative way, one thing to ask is, are you aiming at the right thing? You want to bind it with the fact that random things do happen to people, but it's still a great thing to ask.